Hi everyone, we're Michelle and David and welcome to the Explore Us channel. Hi everyone and welcome again. It's David, the developer of the Traveller app and today I want to just quickly run through the map screen controls. That is all the things and all the elements that are available to you on the map screen. Uh, right now I think I've got most of them turned on. I've got an active navigation plan which has put a few more uh, bits of information available on the map. Um, that little message popping up at the bottom there about GPS uh, low signal is because I, I'm not actually physically connected to a GPS on my development machine. Um, and as before, my simulation control down here, you won't have this in your app uh, when you're running it at home. It's for me to create these videos uh, to make things obvious when we're doing stuff for you to see at home. So all the controls that are on the map, I think I've got them all turned on. We've obviously got our left hand side and right hand side site navigation menus. Um, We've got all of those covered well in other videos and tutorials. Uh, the drop pin uh, at current position, uh, crosshairs uh, option here, wherever our crosshairs are lined up on the screen, and you can see it's just in there. If I press this button, it will allow me to create a position uh, at that location. Obviously, uh, or in this particular instance, it's decided that I was moving during the place ad function uh, because of my simulation walking down to doing this navigation plan. So it's giving me the choice of, do I want to place this at the crosshairs or at the current GPS position? Uh, you know, it's irrelevant. I'm not showing you the dropping of the pin on the map at this point, but if we selected crosshairs, we would be creating a place at the crosshairs, which would drop a new marker right there. Anyway, so onto the map controls themselves. Um, I'll start at the bottom with the most obvious ones. Now these selection of buttons here they can be put on the left hand side or the right hand side of the screen there is a setting to, to adjust those and i'd suggest you have a look at our settings video to understand how best to use all the options in the settings panel uh, at this point we can uh, increase or decrease our zoom again the amount of zoom adjustment is a, set, a setting that you can make how much each button click will adjust by mine's set at 0.5 of a zoom level you can go from 0.1 uh, to about three i think I, I can't exactly remember that'll be in the settings tutorial and that'll tell you how fast it will zoom in in one go the next one up confused a lot of people it's our gps lock um, control and by pressing this we're effectively locking our position center of the screen on the gps position i said center of the screen it is all optional whether it's in the center of the screen or whether you use a center up offset so I've got center up offset turned on. So basically it's dropped the center of the map or where my current position is on the map a little bit lower so that I can see and have a better view of what's ahead of me um, as I'm moving around. And if I press on the simulator and start moving, you can see that in track up offset, it's giving me uh, a, a bigger view ahead because of not being in the center, I would have lost a little bit of content if it wasn't in the center. You'll also note that it uses this symbol type. What I'll just do is if I do just quickly change that, the map setting to north up, uh, from heading display from track up to north up, we should see that the button's changed to a point of market marker. Our map has changed its orientation. And if we lock the GPS, we don't have the track up offset mode in north up mode. It doesn't necessarily seem to make logical sense to me. I'm yet to be convinced of whether I need to do that or not. Um, but basically we're in this mode now. And if we move along, we'll just see our point of moving along the journey. Okay, so to pan the map, uh, one of the things that we find, people want to pan the map to look around and see what's going on. Now, if you are traveling and you're moving and the GPS positions are coming in, and let me just get the simulator started again. I'll just slow it down a little bit. Let's just get it started again. If I try and pan the map to see something ahead, we're gonna snap back to where, we, to where the GPS lock is because at the moment, we've got it configured to be locked with this orange symbol. If we turn that off, we're not locked, but we're still moving. And now we can pan to anywhere on the map and it won't snap back. So don't get confused. If that's locked, 
it will snap you back when it next receives a position update. If you're sitting at home and you're stopped, like I am now, I'm stopped and I'm sitting in my office. Um, if I pan, if I lock that and pan, it will still work unless a position happens to be recorded from the GPS device while I'm stopped. And that can happen every 15 minutes. We do position collection to make sure that the devices are all still working. So it may snap back inadvertently. So just remember, if you don't want it to snap back, change the, don't have that enabled. There is another option. You can change this button so that if you happen to pan off the map, I'm just going to go back and set my north up preference, uh, my track up preference again. If we just scroll down in the settings and there is a whole tutorial on the settings. If I change the, um, the disable GPS lock, I told you that it locked it on. There's two ways to disable it. The manual way, which is pressing that little button to make it go from orange to clear to allow you to pan, or there's automatic. Let's just set it to automatic and see what difference that does. If we lock our GPS onto our current position um, and we're moving, if I have that set to automatic to drop it off, if I pan now, what you'll have noticed is that I've automatically unlocked the GPS. So that little feature allows you to unlock the GPS automatically when you pan the map. I would have to press this button again now to link it back and connect it back to the GPS position. So again, moving, pan away, it turns it off if you've changed that setting. Okay, the next option, the 3D button. Uh, this little button basically puts a slope on the map, uh, a, a bit of a, a pitch on the map, so that things look a little bit more 3D. You can see uh, a slightly different uh, Way, a slightly different rendering of the map view. It looks a little bit more 3D. You can adjust the amount of pitch that's displayed on the 3D control in settings. It goes from 15 degrees to about 45 degrees. So it'll adjust how much pitch is on the map. I'll just turn that off and you'll see it change. It gives you a bit of a better view ahead. As I said, I've got a navigation plan running because I wanted to have all of the controls on the map at once, and that's indicated by this little car picture. We're doing a driving route navigation along this line. While we're doing driving directions, we get our driving directions information displayed to us under this little panel. So we get the text of each of the segments that we're going to do. So drive northwest on Cradle Mountain Road. That's hopefully what we're going to do at some stage. Um, in this navigation plan. And what you'll see is each of these little parts of the plan, they're actually tappable. You can tap on them and it will take you to that section of the driving plan and show you what's what's happening at that particular point in your plan. Okay, Cradle Valley is on the right. So it's on the right of me from where it thinks I'm going to be when I get to there. Okay, so that shows you the textual information of your current driving plan under this icon here. This skip button allows us to skip through our navigation plan. I'm not going to skip through the navigation plan because uh, I'm using this just to show you the demonstration. Obviously right now from where our current position is way up here somewhere because the, nav the simulator jump is back. Uh, we're currently 21.3 kilometers away from Cradle Valley, which is where we're navigating to. Uh, it's 233 degrees and our driving distance is 23 minutes. So our driving distance is 21.3k, so the time it's going to take you to move along this line and the ETA it's going to take you to get there. The difference uh, with the version 7 is that this used to be the straight line information and an ETA calculated based on your position, your, your forward movement towards the location. It's now all based on the maths of the driving calculation system. So it's much more accurate and much more precise. That's again new in version seven. Okay, we've had a whole, there's a whole tutorial on our map layers and overlays, and I'd suggest you have a look at that for the information that's in here. Uh, it allows you to turn on and off the map layers and, and the base map that you're currently viewing. Our driving directions or navigation planner as I said, we're using a navigation plan to get the, the lines on the road and to show you the panel on the left-hand side there. And you can see our navigation plan. There'll be a tutorial on the entire navigation system 
um, but basically the navigation plan and your current plans are in here. And the odometers panel. Now this is likely to be quite large and because I'm sitting in Perth and I'm running a simulator, my snail trail jumps back to Perth every now and then, so I'm racking up lots of kilometers really quickly. We have odometers in the app. You, uh, they are accessible by this little control here. Uh, you can tell it whether you want up from between what, none to three odometers. I've got two running at the moment. Um, obviously, you could clear one of these to clear the odometer. Swipe left and press the clear, and it'll set that one back to zero. As we move, if we get that, if we start moving again, those numbers will all start increasing, uh, and we can stop again. And we could clear it if we so desired. Okay, so there's our odometers. Uh, just as other bits and elements on the map, we have a scale bar down the bottom and the attribution information. And the section in here in the top, in the middle, uh, this little control allows you, shows you the position of the crosshair. So under that exact position in UTM, that's exactly where I am. You can come into this control and you can change these numbers. Uh, so if I change that to six, hopefully it's gonna move me somewhere. It was a little move. Uh, I might have to change a bigger number so that you can see it. Uh, I'll change this decimal, which will give us a jump away from where we currently are to that location. So it's just moved to that position as where the crosshairs are on the map. If we lock our GPS, the crosshairs disappear because we're at our current position, which is always visible in the left-hand menu. Your current position is available here and also some information about the current time and the sunset sunrises. And if you've got enabled the what three words system, you'll see your what three words position displayed here if you're online. So at this particular point right there, these are the statistics for where I'm up to. So the little crosshair on the top of the map, the little, the little indicator up here has disappeared because you've got the GPS lock turned on. So remember, if you want to have a look at the position of where your crosshairs are, turn the crosshairs on by disconnecting the GPS. Okay, so that's about all of the controls. And remember, the one down the bottom, this is a simulation on my development machine, not available to you. I hope this helps you to understand the controls and options that are available on the map screen. Thanks for using Explorers Traveller. Make sure you subscribe and we look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.